This video is sponsored by Opera Web Browser. Folks, it's not lost on me that many of my videos start with me talking about TikTok, but I can't help it. I'm freaking glued to the thing. For you page, more like for glue page. Over the past few years, TikTok has become one of the main ways that people consume video. And it's unavoidable at this point. Everybody has TikTok. Dude, even my mom has TikTok. I guess having a handsome, hilarious, perfect son wasn't enough. You had to download a friggin' app. And of course you got people like Charlie D'Amelio and Addison Ray. That doesn't Ray do anything anymore? I, I don't know. You got tons of people raking in billions of views on TikTok, which snowballs into huge successful careers and a bunch of money. But what's crazy is those people never would have blown up the way they did if it weren't for a bunch of friggin' math nerds who made a really, really good algorithm. Probably the only rhythm they got. Nerds can't dance. <laughs> The TikTok for glue page is a technical feat. And settle down, freaks, the technical feat isn't a robot with nice toes. Dude, my For You page knows me better than myself, I think. 95% of my For You page is just cooking, shit posting, and dogs. But the other 5% is something that I didn't even know I enjoyed. And that is independent musicians. I mean, who knows why? Maybe it's because I had a chart topping country song a few years ago, but I mean, who knows? And some of these independent musicians on TikTok are objectively bad. I'm in Spain without the ex. But I think the rest of the independent musicians are up for interpretation. Art is subjective at the end of the day. In the morning, not so much. But amidst all the machine gun smellies, if you scroll on TikTok for long enough, you'll find some gold. Which brings us to the topic of this video. Uh, first off, let's take it back a bit. April 2022. I'm scrolling on TikTok, as one does, and a snippet from a music video pops up on my For You page. It was a woman and a man singing a duet in a forest on a cloudy day. And the song was unlike anything I've ever heard before. When I first saw that, call me Dustin Hoffman, cause I was hooked. There was something so raw and unique about the vocals. The imagery was so haunting and intriguing and everyone else thought the same. This is 80s post-industrial fantasy goth and I'm obsessed. And they're right, dude. It's mystical, atmospheric, and in a world dominated by A, B, C, D, E, F, U music, this song was the fish swimming upstream. Dude, this song is what this picture looks like. Very in the night, she to hear me. And from there, I immediately started watching the rest of his videos and I instantly became a fan. Who is this mysterious musician, you may ask? His name is James Jepesky. He does it all, dude. He produces all of his songs. He writes all the lyrics. I don't know, man. There was just something about him that was extremely admirable. So I blessed him with a follow. I had to. I even got my friends hooked on James. Me and Jacob were always sending his videos back and forth. And we were devoted fans for like a year, pretty much. And throughout that year, he was posting new music, posting teasers about a musical film he's working on. And he was also doing live shows. And what piqued my interest is when I saw that one of these live shows took place like an hour away from my house. So I shot my shot. I sent James a DM to see if he'd be down for a little interview. Like a little documentary style video about James. Because over the years, I've highlighted a lot of shitty people on my channel. And I think it'd be a nice change of pace to highlight someone nice and good. <laughs> and a few hours later, James responded. Absolutely, I am totally down for that. So, me, Jacob and Dean hopped in my car and drove over to spend a day with James Chapesky. And what that day snowballed into is something that I will never forget for the rest of my life. So sit back and come along as we enter the mystical world of James Chapesky. in the morning I am driving uh, a little outside of Toronto uh, to set up our shoot our interview with James today I may have an end goal here I absolutely have an end goal with this uh, with this interview but I'm not gonna reveal that just yet so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my eyes on the road so uh, 
See ya. I wanted to make a good first impression on James, so I bought this beautiful modern home specifically for this video. That's a joke, but I'm hoping to make that same joke to James to make him laugh. And as you can see, we were already making ourselves right at home. You eating his food? It's one banana. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the fellows were giddy with excitement while we awaited James' arrival. And a few minutes later, there he was. We all met James at the door, and he shook all of our hands. Now it was time to try out my joke. We, um, yeah, I bought this house just for this uh, video. Oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Work like a charm. All right, hello, James. Hello, Curtis. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming. Absolutely. Nice to meet you in person. I'm James Chapesky. I'm a singer, songwriter, record producer. I work in audio for a theater company. I do light shows, movies. Born to entertain is my slogan. Like when I was little, I used to run around the house just like screaming, making making songs off the top of my head, you know, like nothing good. But Freestyling. You know. I'm sorry, little kids. Yeah, you, well, you know, like it was noise we could classify yeah. that as. But you know, as I got older, I started to like write a few like simple melodies and stuff. And 2013 was a big year because I asked my parents for a soundboard for Christmas. They came through and they got me a soundboard and a microphone. So I was like, yes. Yeah, shout out to but, the parents. I know, yeah. I owe, I owe them everything because they, they really helped me get started in music. They also got me some recording software mm -hmm. and then I discovered we have this keyboard in our house and I was okay. like, hey, I could use this keyboard to make my own instrumentals. <laughs> so, you know, I started playing around with some multi-track instrumental stuff and I, I made um, a full song for um, my one song called Rich and I'm Alive. Baby, I'm alive. In fact, I have a soul. It turned out terrible. The recording, the original recording was so bad. <laughs> this is way, I want to let you know, this is before I released anything to YouTube or anything. Okay, wow. Well. Which was good that I waited, because right. the world did not need to hear my early stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I wrote a few other songs. Um, I wrote a song called Music is the Way. When I start to play, I feel a home away. I posted it, shared it with my friends on Instagram, and my, my little tiny following I had at the time, mm -hmm. they all loved it. And Sweet. I was like, hey, this is fun. I like doing music. I love releasing it. So from that day on, that was 2017, July 28th. That was the, the oh, very first the song. Date. Oh, wow. of course. It's, <laughs> it's the J Music anniversary. Every right. year I have it in my phone to post something because like, it's the anniversary. That's you know? so cool. So basically, ever since then, I've been creating music. And every month or two, I like to release a new song, uh, music videos, working with other singers, and I've just expanded. So we know James produces, writes, and performs all of his own music. We know he edits all of his own videos and acts in them as well. But that's not all. On top of all of that, he also programs and orchestrates his very own light shows. I didn't even know that was a thing you could do. The only light show I've ever done is when my dog wakes me up really early and I go to turn a light switch on, but I'm oh so eepy. Aww. So I keep flicking a bunch on and off until I get the right one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not as impressive. Aww. So after watching his entire light show on YouTube, I had to ask him about it. I give that all to Disney. So like, okay, I yeah. love, so Disney, like, have you been to Disney World before? Disney I've been to Disney. Uh... What else do you call adults obsessed with Disney, right? Losers, I'm kidding. I went when I was three, so I don't oh, okay. remember. There's this one show called Fantasmic, which like okay. I've always loved that show. And basically it's a show that kind of combined, like they call it a nighttime spectacular. Cause it's not uh, just lighting. It's not just live performance. It's got a little bit of everything. It's fireworks. Like, yeah, it's got fireworks. Like I've always loved that show. My parents, they actually got me, they bought me the CD of the soundtrack. So I would put it back in the old days. I put on the CD and with my little Disney villains and Disney figurines, <laughs> I'd put on the show with a little, I'd, I'd tape all these flashlights and all these dollar store finger lights all around. Oh, cool. And so it started like that. And then I was like, hmm, wouldn't it be cool if I could get like a controller to control all these lights? So that got me into DMX more professional lighting. So I got, I got all- DMX? Yeah, digital sure. multiplex. Oh, okay. He's <laughs> a rapper as well. DMX is a I, I know, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh... It'd be crazy if he helped you with it. <laughs> well, no, D... this story? <laughs> DMX is basically just a way to control lights, like how they control the theater and all that stuff. So basically, it allows me to hook up my lights to one controller, and then I can link them all together and can program scenes and stuff. Okay, cool. So I started with like one or two lights, and then I just kept buying lights and more lights and more lights. Cool. Got some cool computer software, and then, yeah. <laughs> the rest is history. If you watch James Chapesky's music videos, you'll notice that he collaborates with other artists pretty frequently, but there is one person he collaborates with the most, and that is Nicole 
Beer. Awesome last name. Cheers, I'll drink to that, bro. She sings in a lot of the songs. She appears as main characters in his movies. She's an integral part of the James Chapesky extended universe. And obviously, every time James posts on TikTok with Nicole, every single comment is asking if they're dating or not. Because they're two people who hang out a lot. And that's where you go wrong, man. If you appear with anyone online more than one time, I'm sorry, there's already a fanfic about you two people. That, that's just the way it goes. So I figured I'd let James set the record straight on his completely platonic professional relationship with Nicole. So we actually took the same program at Conestoga, the TV broadcast. Oh, cool. So we met there. The first project we did together was actually the Soul music video. So we did some like group projects and stuff together in school and well that Soul music video was actually a project for school. Like we had we had to create a short video. I was like, I'm making a music video. Guys. Like this is my kind of assignment, guys. Like, yeah. And so I was asking around people in the class that I knew to help with it. I was like, hey, Nicole, do you want to be in this? And she was like, sure. So that was kind of the first thing we did together. And then from there, you know, we did another project called A Dream in Color. You know I dream in black and white when you are gone. And then, yeah, from there, because we worked so well together, we just continued doing music basically, and we've been working on music ever since. And cool. I feel like when we're working together, we both feed off of each other's creative ideas, and we're just able to create some really good stuff together. And we have fun, so it's basically like, you know, just hanging out, having fun, making music, you know? So it's, uh, yeah. I don't feel of it as like a job or anything, because it's hanging out with friends, doing stuff we enjoy doing, right? In the modern day, if you want to make it, e damn, I should film here every time. It looks so good. <laughs> in the modern day, if you want to make it in the music industry, you got to be on TikTok. <laughs> Listening to a top 40 playlist is essentially the same thing as scrolling through trending TikTok sounds, except the songs are too long. <laughs> and like I said, TikTok is how I found James and his music. And I have my issues with the app, like how people can say the most racist, misogynistic, transphobic shit ever with zero consequences. Well, bad consequences at least. But on the flip side, TikTok can be a life-changing thing for people. Tons of careers have started and blossomed because because of TikTok. So I was curious to get an up and coming musician's opinion about the app. TikTok, oh my gosh, I can go on and on about TikTok. <laughs> so when did, uh, when did you start <laughs> using TikTok? Okay, funny thing about TikTok. So when TikTok first came out, <laughs> or whenever it started getting popular, I was in um, high school and I thought it was the most stupid app ever. But there was one thing that I overlooked and that is it's got an incredible algorithm. Nerds can't dance. So I, I would post like little clips of my songs, you know, get like 10 views, it's like, okay, whatever. I, I did do this one crazy little dancing video that went kind of viral, and I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. But you know, people didn't really follow, it was just that one video, so it didn't really yeah. make a lasting impact. Mm -hmm. And then Fairy in the Night came out, and that was the song that changed everything. It was a life-changing song. There's a fairy in the night, she hear me. That's how I found out about you from that That's how most people found out me. <laughs> so anyways, that was a song that uh, Nicole and I did. And I, I feel like everything with that song just worked. It had a really cool melody. It was my first time doing like two kind of overlapping harmony parts. Like there's, mm -hmm. it's basically like we're having a conversation, me and Nicole, singing back to each other. And posted it on YouTube. Posted a little like 30 second clip on TikTok. You know, wasn't expecting anything crazy. The next day I look at my phone. <laughs> how many views and comments is that? <laughs> and I was like, Nicole, I think we had a song that went viral. So our interview took place in the middle of James filming his new musical film, Darkness, that actually tells the origin story of the fairy in the night. Here's the synopsis. When a mysterious girl living far away from human civilization is kidnapped by the slick and incredibly handsome man of pure evil, she must learn to trust in a young boy scout to keep her safe from the darkness of the night. For this film, basically, I stop by, okay, I'll just open a document on my computer and I just start typing like basic ideas. When you're working with really talented actors like Nicole and my sister Rebecca, she's in it, and they're really good at improvising. And I feel like sometimes you can come up with better stuff if I just give them direction like, okay, this is the motive for, you, this for your character, this is what needs to happen in the scene, let's make it happen. That's what it's all about, right? Is I do this stuff because I enjoy doing it. I don't really do it to make money, I do it, like that's what I'm working at the theater for. <laughs> I, I do it because I enjoy doing it and I, I want people to see my work and I want to entertain the world, born to entertain, you know, that's that's the slogan, that's what I'm all about. All yeah, my next question was, uh, you know, what sort of motivates you to keep creating art, but you just answered it. Because I love it. A few weeks after our interview, something happened that I thought would never happen. I was invited to appear in the movie 
darkness. James friggin' messages me out of the blue, says he needed some extras to dance in the background of the biggest shot of the entire film. That would mean that me, Kurt, would be canon, call me Nick Cannon, that would mean I would be canon in the fairy in the night universe. So I said yes immediately. So a couple weeks later, me and Dean were hopping back in my car to head back to Kitchener to be in the movie. We are in Kitchener slash Waterloo. We're getting some behind the scenes footage of G, uh, I was gonna call him James. His name's James. So yeah, we're gonna go there. We're gonna actually be in the movie. And I'm really excited. I'm excited to see how he operates, how we, uh, what his process is when he's filming one of these uh, movie scenes. So yeah, I wanted to film stuff s sooner, but you know, I was, you know, we were pretty, he was busy, I was busy. I was in London and LA. It's life is a movie. I feel like I'm just on, on the go all the time, you know, you know what I mean? It's like embarrassing how much I'm just like. Ugly. Do you want me to agree with you? <laughs> yeah, if you I don't know. want to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> the big finale and the big opening. Good to see you, pal. How's it going? Good. Good to see some dancing. Oh yeah, that was boring. Right? Awesome. How's it going? Good. Good, good, to good to see you. James gave us the rundown of the video shoot and even had a full-on call sheet and everything. And this was the first time I got to fully see James in his element. Just talking to him about his art was inspiring enough, but being there and seeing James's passion for what he was trying to make was so infectious. And he was committed to his character all day, because it was like 2 degrees Celsius, and he was in his character's costume of just a t-shirt and jeans the entire time. But after a long day, we got a pretty good music video. So sing a song of laughter, and sing a song of praise, sing to everybody. In between takes of us dancing, me and Dean sat down at a picnic table to take a break. And this is when another extra named Reggie approached us. And we did not expect this conversation to go the way that it did. Boys, <laughs> what is this documentary? Do you find uh, the Chronicles of James and his... Uh, we just Curtis just yeah. found him super interesting. I grew up in this area. And uh, me and my buddies discovered this guy like three years ago. Like before there was TikTok and, and he had an account oh, wow. Wow. on YouTube. And we were just like, what's the word where you're just like enamored, like lost in this guy's yeah. passion and drive? Right? Exactly yeah. what we thought. Like so. this guy is going to, like his, his energy is so infectious. Yeah. Wait, last night were you, he did a TikTok a live, live. That was, yeah. So I, I paid him to come oh, and do his shit. first gig. Yeah, it was supposed to be like a birthday party, mm -hmm. but it ended up just being me and my, like one buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so James ended up bringing more people than like I had there. Oh my know? god! That's but awesome. I didn't really like. I just wanted to give him like a boost of confidence that he can, sure. he can actually give, make money off. Of, yeah, you know? yeah, and and have a. Uh, that's amazing. Like a support around him. Yeah. And then he brought a couple friends and he played like he was playing in front of a fucking stadium. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it, was, it was in front of like two people. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. And he played for like three hours. This is like the first time I've supported him financially, but yeah. Mm -hmm. like I've been like passing on his messages and his videos and stuff. Right. For somebody who just puts himself out there, you know? For sure. Absolutely. Unfiltered and just raw. And it's very incredibly uh, passionate about his yeah. about his craft. And I respect people like that that take risks and and like he's just going for it. I don't have the balls this guy has to like just go out there and just absolutely kill it and slay it. You want to say something? Dude, I couldn't have planned a better interaction to have with someone that day. That conversation with Reggie pretty much confirmed everything that I was feeling about James and his art. It is incredibly easy to be ironic and sarcastic about shit and try to act like you're cooler than everything else. I do that shit all the time. You know, just because it's easier than being genuine. But being unapologetic and sincere and passionate about the art that you're making is incredibly admirable. Also, side note, <laughs> Reggie was also like such a beauty to show up and dance in that music video. Because apparently he had a, a broken shoulder the whole time. I have to go to the <laughs> My shoulder's broken. I'm in so much pain right now. Still dancing though. As you can see, I'll put some footage here. We were background dancers for the final song i believe the one thing i really noticed was that i didn't we didn't get this on camera but james is a uh, james is not afraid to tell you if you did something that he didn't want you to do he has a vision and if you don't do what he what his vision is you know he'll fucking tell you yeah. and honestly respect because if it was most people they'd just be like yeah, good good job and now we're gonna get some food 
Stupid. Give me your lunch money now. I've done my fair share of criticizing in my career, but I don't think anything I've said has like crossed the line from joking to bullying. And if it did, they probably deserved it. But TikTok is a different story, dude. You could say the meanest thing you could possibly think of from the darkest part of your brain, and you would get exactly 1 million likes from it. It's wild. And talking to James, it seems like it doesn't affect him whatsoever. So I wanted to talk to him and find out his secret. So the big thing that you got to keep in mind is that a lot of people on TikTok are stupid. <laughs> talk your shit, James. <laughs> not, no, not offense to my fans. My fans, I love you guys. I'm yeah. talking about the people that are just mean out there. Exactly. Yeah. But no, like basically, a lot. I feel like a lot of people comment mean things because they see that I'm having some success. And, and like fun. Like you're and fun. So I'm having fun. fun. And yeah. people that are unhappy with their lives, they don't like seeing other people have fun. They don't like happy people. But I'll admit, I'm not a professional singer. I'm, I might not sing every note perfectly, you know. Right, nobody does. But I must be doing something right because people are watching the stuff. People are buying personalized videos, CDs. So people l must like the content. Exactly. I, I'm sure not everyone likes it, but hey, as long as I got a decent following that do enjoy it, then that's what matters, right? Like, I'm not trying to appeal to the whole world because you're never going to be able to appeal to the whole world. There's always going to be people that, that don't like your stuff. I don't really worry about what other people think. I do what I want to do. If I wake up and it's like, I want to write a song, I'm going to write a song. I'm not going to let it stop me if someone's like, oh, well, I might not like that. like, I don't care what you think. I want to write a song. I'm going to write a song. People have all these dreams, all these things they want to do, but something's holding them back. And they feel like, oh, what if I'm not good enough? Or what if someone doesn't like it? Well, who cares? You're not going to please everyone, right? Like, just do what you want to do and ignore the haters. All right, so it was nearing the end of our interview. And earlier in the video, I said that I had an end goal. I may have an end goal here. And looking back on my content, Content, it seems that I release one song every year and we're halfway through 2023 and I haven't made a song yet So who better to make the song of 2023 and possibly the song of the summer than the one and only James Chapesky. Do you have like a dream collab? Like if you were to collab with any a artist. A dream collab? Yeah, any artist in the world, alive or dead. It would be really cool if me and Michael Jackson did something, you know? We yeah. both have... You and Michael Jackson, that's <laughs> that, go hard. That would be fun, though. You gotta admit, like, <laughs> yeah. that might be too much wahoo in one in one video. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> okay, cool. Would you ever be open to uh, collaborating with, like, uh, like a lesser-known musician? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I love collaborating with as many different people as possible. Okay, And cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> would you ever collab with, like a like, a country artist? Sure, I mean, I've never really done any country, but okay. I mean, I like I like new country. Like, I think it sounds great. I mean, so yeah, I'm totally open to expanding upon my genres and yeah, working with anything, basically. <laughs> well, if you didn't know, I have a, I put out a song like last year, it got to number four on the country charts. Really? Yeah, so if you ever Whoa. want to- Whoa, so okay. Could, do, would you ever want to- I would love to do that, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We don't have to do a country song, but it would be cool. No, I think cool that would be a great idea. I'm always down for collaborations. So it's a definite <laughs> yes for me, <laughs> absolutely. <Let's go. laughs> Perfect. And with the song collab secured, there was only one thing left to ask. Would you mind teaching me your uh, your dance that, that you Oh did? yes, absolutely. Okay, I gotta stand for this. You might <laughs> okay. have to readjust the cameras. You're gonna burn a lot of calories doing this. Just okay. try not to pass out. You know, you gotta breathe when you're doing it. Should I just watch you first? This is what it looks like in full speed. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> you burn a lot of calories. Like I said, it's, think of it as you're moving every part of your body as fast as possible. Okay. So the arms, you, you can kind of do like a snappy kind of thing. Basically, so do this, do it faster, do it faster, 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 back and forth, yeah, okay, good. So you got the arms with the chest, you gotta do the, the shoulder shimmy, so that, yeah, so combine the arms and that. <laughs> good, you got the top out, that's awesome, that's half it. And then it's the legs. Now the legs are difficult to teach. Yeah. Think of it like a shuffle. Yeah. So you're shuffling the legs, so start up slow like that. Now, got the arms, got the shuffle, now speed up slowly, faster, faster, do the, the shoulder, okay, faster, yeah, there you go, you got it! <laughs> Woo! Doing the dance with James looked like so much fun that Jacob and Dean had to give it a shot too. And do the shoulder yeah, shoulder shimmy, there you go. Yeah, you guys got it! That's awesome! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, that was great! Awesome! After our interview, we hung out at the big house I bought and James showed us how he puts his songs together. He gave us some insight into how he writes his music. I don't really use sheet music for anything because you don't need to. <laughs> like, I just I feel the music. I feel it. You know, I'm yeah. sure lots of people will disagree with me, but I don't know. I'm 
and st I don't like to be too like technical with the, the theory and all that. I just you're do like it. Uh, you're like Tiger Woods. I do it sounds good basically, right? It's like so. Tiger Woods. He then got to talking about mixing and how important it is to EQ vocals. He showed us the mix for Fairy in the Night and made a very funny realization while doing so. Now I'm looking at this and I'm like, did I really not EQ Nicole's vocals? I'm like, you gotta be James and me. I can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you gotta be James and me, right? Like, <laughs> So James started packing up all this stuff, and this is when we started talking about this video that I wanted to make. And dude, this was my favorite part of the entire day, I think, because I think it completely sums up who James Chapesky is as a person. How many subscribers do you got? Uh, I got like over four million. Four million? Wow, okay. <laughs> he had no idea who I was. He didn't look me up to figure out like who I was or what I did. All he thought was like, oh, someone wants to talk to me about my music? Fuck yeah, let's do it. I love my music. Do you have any idea how fucking awesome that is? Well, don't do it. Don't do that. Do your research before you show up to a random house to meet three men. I just thought that was so incredible, dude. So after the interview, another few months went by. I went to Australia. You know, my life is like a movie. It's just crazy. I'm just always on the go. It's, it's fucked up, dude. But once I got back and we were both free, it was go time. I thought me and James were going to write the song together, but he just showed up with a fully written song for both of us, uh, a duet titled Feeling of Victory. So now that I own this huge house, I had James come over yet again to record some vocals and film the music video. James arrived at the house and we realized that we were pretty much wearing the exact same outfit. I'm being 100% serious. We did not plan this. I also fucking never wear red. I think it was destiny. I had a donut. We were laughing and hanging out. I had another donut. And James began setting up our makeshift recording studio in the living room. We spent the next hour recording my vocals for the song. I'll try I'll try laying a track down. Okay. No, if it's bad, I'll just delete it. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. James is not afraid to tell you if you did something that he didn't want you to do. When I heard her voice call out. Okay, so okay. First take, okay, first take. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna delete that, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 keep it. Keep no, I, I have some suggestions. Yeah, here, yeah. So. And with the help of James, each take got a little bit better. And he was forcing me to take creative risks. At one point, he was even forcing me to rap my part of the song. The way she moved, uh, the way she sang, uh, the feeling I I'm glad we didn't do that. And after about an hour, we got the take. I heard her voice call out. That's it. Yeah, that's what I like. You nailed it. That's, that's exactly what I was talking about with the... Yeah, the yeah, direction was really good. Because at the beginning, I was like, I nailed it first try. But it sounds so much better than the, the last one. To the first I'm always trying to make you do your best. Now, the only thing left was to film the music video. So, so we did that. We did it. So uh, here's the music video. But before that, we got to talk about the sponsor of this video. Opera. I don't know about you guys, but I'm on the computer all the time. I've been surfing the web for like 20 years now, and if you use the internet as much as me, you need a browser that can keep up. And that's why I use Opera One, the latest version of Opera Desktop Browser. Opera One features a completely redesigned look and brand new functionalities. And I get it, it's easy to just stick with your system's default browser. But if you do that, you're missing out on some incredible features you can only get with Opera One. For example, a free VPN and ad blocker are built directly into the browser, so you can browse safely and securely while annoying a bunch of annoying ads. All completely free in Opera. You can use the Opera Player to play your favorite songs and podcasts from a number of popular streaming services directly from your browser with just a few simple clicks. And Opera also makes it incredibly easy to stay connected with the people in your life with their fully integrated messaging apps like Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, and more. I also have a really terrible habit of having like a million tabs open at one time and it gets really overwhelming. But with Opera One's Tab Islands, it automatically groups tabs together to keep your experience more organized and focused. For example, if you're trying to decide on an Airbnb for an upcoming trip, it will group all of your options together in a tab island so you don't fill up your browser with a bunch of distracting, confusing tabs. But I think the coolest thing about Opera One is their integrated browser AI, Aria. It's like having a little genius friend that just like helps you out with whatever you need. For example, I was trying to figure out a good title for this YouTube video. So I asked Aria to give me five enticing titles for a YouTube video about a TikTok musician. And it gave me five amazing jumping off points to use for this video. And that's just one example of the millions of things that Aria can do in Opera One. And if you're thinking, oh my God, Opera seems perfect, but it's so much work to start over on a whole new browser. Well, listen up, because with just a few clicks, you can transfer over everything from your old, slow, outdated browser to Opera One. 
and you can instantly start using Opera One without worrying about setting everything up all over again. So if you want to improve your internet browsing experience in every possible way, click the link in the description and download Opera One today for free. Thank you so much to Opera for sponsoring this video. Now, enjoy the music video. I woke up one day in an ordinary way. The sun shined through my window, but I could hear someone say, it was a voice or someone singing a song A sound that would change my life But then the melody came to me I was blind, but now I can see A sound like this takes a sound of misery A joyous noise for the world to see oh, oh, oh. And I know I can feel the Everybody, can't you hear it all right? It's a song that'll make you dance through the night When you feel it in your body, make you move and sing Like a wooden puppet tied up by a string Oh, whoa, oh, and I know yeah, I can feel the music in me Oh, oh, and it's so It's a feeling of victory I was walking along when I heard a song An angel voice which moved in my soul She mesmerized and hypnotized When she put that music in me The way she moved, the way she sang The feeling I had in my brain I felt that I could never be the same when I heard her voice call out Cause there's no word to describe How I'm feeling inside When I hear that voice in you Music out to the floor Like never before I want to sing with you Won't you listen everybody Can't you hear it alright It's a song that'll make you Dance through the night When you feel it in your body All right, uh, that song will be available to stream on Spotify and everywhere else. If you want to watch just the music video, just head over to James's channel because it'll be uploaded there in its entirety. And also subscribe to him while you're there. Seriously, subscribe to James. My goal for this video is to make it so when you type James C H A, Chapesky shows up before Charles. Okay. <laughs> at first, this video was just about taking a closer look at a TikToker who makes unique music. But after talking with James, spending a couple days with him, and then even creating with him, this whole process changed into something so much more. I feel like I've learned so much from James over the past few months. I've learned to appreciate and often envy his sincerity, passion, and confidence. And those are all incredibly admirable qualities that I think we should all try to implement in our own lives. And if you listen to James's music, you'd pick up on a common lyrical theme. He uses the words light and night a lot. Fairy in the night, see the light. In the darkness, there's no light. When the darkness rules the night. I've noticed like a theme in your song. Night. It's, yeah, it's sort of become like a meme. Get that a lot, yeah. yeah on TikTok. Yeah, I know. Is there like a special like significance to that, do you think? I feel like, I don't know, I found something that worked and I kind of just got into this habit. I do need to expand more and reach out because <laughs> I do tend to use the same lyrics over and over again. I admit it. I refuse to believe that. Maybe James isn't consciously aware of it, but I think subconsciously, he knows what it all means. The internet can be a dangerous, daunting, dark place. It sometimes feels like a pitch black, endless night where you feel crowded but completely alone at the same time. And it frequently feels inescapable. But if you look hard enough in places you wouldn't normally look and you give it some time and some dance moves, a light will appear. And that light in the night is James Chapesky.
And if you think otherwise, you gotta be James and me. People have all these dreams, all these things they want to do, but something's holding them back. And they feel like, oh, what if I'm not good enough? Or what if someone doesn't like it? Well, who cares? You're not going to please everyone, right? Like, just do what you want to do and ignore the haters. I like people to feel something when they're listening to my music. I don't want it just to be background elevator music. I want it to be either powerful, emotional, you know, people to walk away like feeling something after they hear this stuff. How to get anywhere in this world is you got to be unique. You got to be different. If you're doing the same kind of stuff that everyone else is doing, then you're just like, well, why, why are people going to watch your stuff? You got to stand out. The sky's looming. You can do whatever you want.